In this video, we're going to have a look at how we can handle some more complex conversation requirements using something called iScorable. iScorable allows you to categorize and prioritize different parts of conversation so you can deliver a consistent experience to the user without them having to navigate back and forth through dialogues. I'm going to start by showing you a quick slide deck just to kind of <laughs> illustrate the concepts and then we'll have a look at the code and see how you can implement it for yourself. So I want to talk you through the example of the banking bots, just using traditional dialogues without implementing iScorable. If we map a conversation that the user might have with the bot, we might start at the root dialogue. The user might ask to check the balance. And if the user changes her mind and wants to make a payment instead, using the traditional dialogues, the user would still have to continue through the normal process, which was to check the current balance and then return to the parent and then return to the parent and then the user would be able to make a payment. So obviously that's quite a frustrating user experience. Now, if we have a look at the same idea, but by implementing iScorable, we can give the user the opportunity to interrupt a conversation. So you can see from the start, we've disassociated our hierarchy and we've implemented these two scorable components at the top. So the conversation would start at the root dialogue as um, the previous example. The user would say check balance, at which point the scorable would evaluate and trigger. That would add a check balance dialogue to the top of the stack. But at this point, the user changes her mind and she decides that she wants to make a payment instead. So she types make payment and the scorable for make payment fires at that point. We can then transition directly into the make payment dialogue without having to force the user to go through the normal process. Once the user's finished with making a payment, processing continues as before. So you can see by composing scorable dialogues together, um, as individual components rather than building up a big hierarchy, you can you can build up a really flexible conversation. So I've got the code open in Visual Studio. I'll just briefly show you what this looks like. Um, we have a messages controller and the messages controller, if I just zoom out so you can see it a bit clearer, um, the messages controller introduces itself when a, when a user joins the conversation and it just says you can interrupt me by saying check balance or make payment at any point. Otherwise, I'll echo back what you say to me. Okay. We then transition into the root dialogue once we receive a message. Okay. And then the root dialogue outputs this message and echoes any text that the user says um, back to the user. So it's pretty straightforward. Now, we implement the iScorable components by having the scorable check balance, which implements scorable base. And there's, there's quite a lot to this, but I just want to briefly talk you through it. The very first method that bot framework will call is this prepare async. And this allows us to evaluate a message. It basically allows us to get into the pipeline as the message has been processed. And if um, we're interested in the message, we can um, assign a score to it. So this value here. So all I'm doing here is basically saying if the message text is check balance, then I'm saying it's been triggered. So this value here is just a state that gets passed back to get score has score and post async by bot framework. So in, in get score, I can return a score, basically the values between zero and one. Here it's either zero or one because it's quite a binary decision. But if you had something like a Q&A bot or a search engine or something, you might want to return a, a, a precise value uh, representing the, the confidence of the, the result. So assuming that I've passed a, um, an affirmative response there and that that number is greater than any of the other scorables, um, the post async message will get fired. And this is the opportunity for me to add um, 
my dialog to the top of the stack. So it's really as simple as that. Um, in this example, I have two scorables. So I have check balance and make payment. So check balance checks for the text check balance. Make payment checks for the text make payment. And in either case, um, they're both responsible for adding their corresponding dialogues to the top of the stack. So pretty straightforward. Then once we're in um, check balance, for example, the, we just have a normal dialogue flow inside here because this is very contextual and it doesn't make sense to have a further level of, of I scorable. There probably seems like there's a bit of a missing link there in terms of how does bot framework evaluate these um, scorables? How does it become aware of them? Well, it's actually quite simple. If I have a look in my global asax.cs file, we have the opportunity to register a type to the IOC container. So we're registering our I scorables, our two I scorables, and we're defining our concrete classes. And by adding them both here, Bot Framework will, will basically run both of these, evaluate both of these, and make sure that um, you know where there's a where there's a score that needs to be evaluated, the two are compared with each other and the, the appropriate ones called. So I'm just going to run this now. So you can see it's introduced itself and I can just say hi and it'll echo back what I, whatever I say. Okay, so that's pretty conventional so far, but now I can actually say, right, I want to check balance. And at this point, the um, iScorable is fired and automatically provisioned and this scorable check balance dialog on top of the stack in the appropriate place. So if I as the user decide, actually, I don't want to uh, check my balance at this point, I want to make a payment, I can still say make payment. And it's interrupted the dialog that where I was at. And it's um, now continuing at the make payment dialog. So I can say account one, two, three, 100 pounds, and at that point, we're returned to the previous dialogue, which was a scrollable check balance dialogue. So you can see that was a really, really simple example, um, but actually it really showed you the power of composing dialogues as, as discrete components that are actually not linked by any kind of hierarchy. And by doing that, you can, you know, you can build up these really flexible and rich conversations without um, forcing the user down paths and decision trees and that kind of thing. So it's really powerful and it gives the users a lot of, lot of flexibility. Hopefully you found this useful. I will include the link to the um, code on GitHub in the description box below. Um, so I'd encourage you to have a look. If you've got any questions, because this is a this is a more advanced topic, if you've got any questions, please um, let me know, and I'll I'll do my best to answer them as as best I can.